Megan, thank you so much for speaking with WXIA here in Atlanta and Tegna nationwide about Selling Girls, which is an investigation that we put our heart and soul into. So thank you for taking the time out to speak with us this morning. Absolutely. And let me tell you, your reporting on this has been gripping and really important and caught our eye. Uh, and we looked at this and said, wait a minute, Ex especially the fact that you have one of the buyers on camera talking about his experience in buying girls. It's extraordinary and it's really hard to get. So thanks to your good work, it sparked our interest and we're trying to take it uh, to another level and expand the discussion, broaden it out and talk about real solution points as well. Megan, that makes me curious. You know, this is a billion dollar underground economy. So what is it about this story and Tegna's reporting that inspired you all to do a one hour special dedicated to this topic? Well, I don't think most people know that sex trafficking is happening to the extent it is in the United States. And I don't think people know exactly what it is. I mean, I thought sex trafficking was when a, a girl is kidnapped and forced into sex slavery. That's what I thought, and I thought it mostly happened overseas. It's wrong, wrong. I mean, I feel like alert, alert parents at home. It could be happening to your 11 or 12 year old, and you might not know it. And so I feel like we need to jump up and down, jump up and down, and sound the alarm like you guys started. Yes. To talk about what it actually is. Prostitution is not always voluntary. In fact, in a lot of the cases, it's forced. And the woman is under threat, and she's been controlled, and she's scared within an inch of her life. And how these women find themselves going from normal middle class family in, you know, cheerleader, honor roll, into in the hotel room having to check for weapons, and then go on the bed eight to ten times a day against their will is a shocking story that should never mm. happen in America, but it does, and it is. And you hit the nail on the head, Megan. You said this is gripping. You know, though we show the evils of this entire underground industry, the lives of girls taken too soon in different ways, this is the story of survivors. This is what we really want to highlight. So what really jumped out to you as we showcased those survivor stories? how how torturous it, it's been for them i mean how they never wanted to do this they, they didn't want to mm. prostitute themselves they 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 didn't want to be in the room all day with 10 men coming into the room one after the other some of whom are sadistic serial rapists they say um, and yet they felt vulnerable or they attached themselves to the wrong man uh, a boyfriend that got them into it someone online that's another key thing someone online who paid them a compliment mm -hmm. and these women did have vulnerabilities but some of them were strong and had a background that you would never think would make them susceptible to that ty that type of praise or that time type of threat uh, and yet to a woman we heard themes emerging about how they get dragged into it and how hard it is to get out Megan, our Tegna station spent months investigating this. I mean, right here in Atlanta, WXIA spent eight months digging through court data, police reports, and so many other research that they were able to do. You know, what are you hoping your viewers get out of selling girls and, and your special tomorrow? I mean, I think Tegna deserves a major hat tip because just making people care about this takes some effort. Because again, when you hear that term sex trafficking, I think most people think it's somebody else's problem. And so just taking the time to gather the evidence, mm -hmm. get people on camera, uh, was really important work, really important work. And as I say, it's not every, every day you see an actual buyer come clean about how he was doing it, how often he was doing it, and what it was like when he had to confess to his wife that he was doing it. Um, so I really think a salute to Tegna is in order, and, and we pay that. Um, our goal is, is to let people know this is a real problem and to let parents know these are the warning signs uh, that you should be looking for in your own daughter who you may think is not at risk but who may be going through it from your own home hmm. right now. Uh, and then to give real solution points, you know, places they can go uh, and talking points they can use. I mean, one of the things one of our experts said was one thing parents can do is say to your daughter the things that the traffickers say to them in attempting to reel them in. Tell your daughter that you love her. Tell her that she's beautiful. Tell her you know, that you believe in her. 
some parents forget to say it, believe it or not, and wow. th these traffickers are smart, they're cunning, and so they use the language they know will, will lure some of these young, more susceptible girls in. But if the parents have already been there, preparing for that moment, it's far tougher for the bad guys. Wow, Megan, you sound like you have already been doing the months long research that so many techno stations have been doing. And I love how passionate you are about this. And I think what better person wow, to really to you put guys. this thanks to you guys. In, in the forefront. So thank you so much for for highlighting us and help and allowing us to help uh, with this. I want you to also know that we're going to be tuned in. We'll be front row <laughs> for the wow. special. OK, thank you. It's my honor, truly. Thank you for all your great work. Thanks for speaking with us, Megan. You have a great rest of your day. Right. You too. Much love.